were around during those days. <laughs> you were around in some of John's early days there doing that stuff. How, what, what's your experience related to uh, these instruments coming into well, your... Well, um, I started a little earlier. Um, I went to Italy in 1945, right after the Second World War with my parents, and I got introduced to an instrument called the Maranzano, which was the uh, Jews harp. And that fascinated me, and I find out through study and exploration that the, the Jews harp came from a lot of countries. And I, I'll never forget, I still have the most beautiful cassette of a Jews harp player that John turned me on to from Ireland that just... Whew, you cry when you when you hear it and when I think about it. It's just beautiful stuff. Um, I really got started with uh, collecting ethnic instruments. In, uh, well, first of all, I moved to California in 1959. I came with a, a vibe and a marimba. And uh, my first gig was the day I arrived in L.A. I got a studio call, and I went on the call... And they asked me to play a tambourine, so I borrowed it from somebody beside playing marimba. And they said, hey, you know, uh, there's a drum shop right across the street from the Musicians Union, so when you pick up your check, you should go to across the street to the jump, drum shop, and every time you get asked to play a different instrument, you should buy it, you know? I said, I, I play vibes, man. I ain't going to bother with that. <laughs> well, about three or four years later, we did a percussion album with maybe... 12 percussionists and all the stuff in the room was mine and the guy said Milt Holland said you remember the first day I told you about collecting instruments as, as you as you play them and you said man I play vibes look at you now you know <laughs> and um, so what happened was in 1962 uh, I was fortunate enough to go around the world with Frank Sinatra uh, we had helped uh, President Kennedy get elected by some of the uh, uh, commercials that we did on High Hopes. Uh, Frank changed all the words around to, to make it for High Hopes for, for Jack Kennedy. And what, what happened was, um, what happened was... Uh, it's another session call. <laughs> president, he became president. He, he asked uh, Frank if he would go on a world tour for underprivileged children of the world and, and create hospitals all around the world uh, under the auspices of the State Department. And uh, Frank said, I'll do one better. Rather than the State Department paying for it, I got my own jet. I'll, I'll pay for it. So President Kennedy said, well, that's great. I'll have every, everywhere you go in the world, I'll have uh, our ambassador meet you so you can get through customs and all that. With your passport, you won't have to hassle any of that. Well, I started collecting instruments then, and I filled the belly of Frank's plane, and I didn't have to pay duty. Uh, we could have taken anything. We could have taken drugs in because we had we had uh, all the ambassadors meeting us, and, and we got right through customs. So, man, I just filled up the plane with instruments from every country we went to. And when I got back... I started doing some movie calls and TV calls. Uh, I think one of the early uh, shows I was doing was I Spy, and that, they were in a different country every week. And any, as soon as I got back, composers would say, what's new, what do you got? I, I, wanna, I wanna be the first one to use that instrument, you know? So I, I went to the drum shop and the guys at the drum shop said, hey man, we rent those instruments out to the studio, so if you're going to start doing this stuff, you're cutting us out of work. You have to rent that stuff. I said, fine, I don't care. <laughs> so that became another side business in a way. Uh, and uh, it's just amazing that composers, uh, the old guys, I'm talking about the early Alfred Newmans and uh, Frank Skinner and uh, um, uh, on and on. I can't remember all the names, but... They knew so much about ethnic music and instruments from around the world. Uh, it, it was phenomenal, and they really did their homework. Be uh, the reason I know is because I got in on a lot of that before they would even call the orchestra in or even write the score. They would call me and say, what do you have from Vietnam? What do you have from somewhere else? 
early in when I got there to L.A., somebody, uh, Alan Ferguson, had just come back from Laos, and he brought back some onklongs, uh, these bamboo rattles, and he gave them to me. He says, here, you're a percussionist. You take them. And I started using them right away. Jerry Goldsmith loved them, and we started using them on a lot of his scores. And the bottom line for just that instrument alone is that uh, I've been trying to study where did the marimba really come from? Being a mallet player, that was my biggest interest. And I, it's just my theory that it didn't start in Africa. It started in China and that it bridged its way through Indonesia and, the, and, and those countries as a rattle, as the bamboo rattle, and worked its way to Africa as that rattle because in Bali they have these bamboo instruments that are shaped just like the onklong. And that's just my theory that that's where it all started. So I got interested from then on, and it's out of hand, of course, now. <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who don't know, from what I've heard, is that the majority of the instruments in the PAS uh, uh, Museum have been uh, brought there by Mr. Emerald Richards, and it's an honor to bring him. Each one of these guys, we could sit down with a panel all by themselves, in my opinion. They, they offer a huge amount of wealth. So 